Hey guys, the Lord here, back again with another review, and today we'll be taking a look at the McFarlane Toys Warhammer 40k Chaos Marine. Now before we get into the meat and taters of this review, since I no longer have the packaging for this figure, let's first take a look-see at his accessories, starting off with this big honkin' knife that can actually store on his belt right by his loincloth there so uh, always a fan of weapon storage here on this channel but uh, this thing is almost a freaking sword like this is a knife for this guy but for anyone else it is almost a sword particularly a scimitar type sword that said in true Warhammer fashion he has a big arse gun the big blade on it this would look good with the uh, commando spawn I looked at yesterday, huh? Definitely uh, fits the bill as far as McFarlane Toys figure is concerned. Takes me back to the 90s with uh, Spawn 2, I believe. Uh, came with a gun very similar to this, right down to the blade on the front. So that's pretty cool. That said, in true Warhammer fashion, at least for these ultramarine types, he does come with a backpack that you can plug into his back as well. Yeah, this big old honking pig on the back. And on top of all of that, he of course comes with the McFarland Toys Hockey Puck display stand with the Warhammer. 40k logo on it there that said taking a closer look at the chaos marine uh, a very very cool looking figure dan who has uh in his videos this little group of characters called the who crew i may have to try something like that for my channel uh, call it like the overlord squadron supreme or something and it can be figures like this guy, uh, the Marauder from Doom, definitely fits the bill. And of course, the team leader is going to be uh, Brother Mandibulous, you know, mascot of the channel and everything. But I may have to try something like that out at some point. Because this guy definitely would uh, be a part of my kind of demon, uh, evil, scary looking guy squad that uh, could potentially be regulars on the channel. We'll see. We will see about all that. I tend to uh, like to try my own ideas, but uh, I do like Dan Who. He's a good reviewer. Uh, does not get on my nerves. It has some pretty decent content, especially if you're a Legends fan. But uh, we're not talking about all that today. We're talking about the Chaos Marine here. And if this is not an Overlord figure, I don't know what it is. He's got like demon horns. He's got skulls, particularly on this side. He's got uh, spikes. He's black, as far as the armor is concerned. Um, he's got some gold accents for these skulls. They're like a dark bronze color for the skulls. A very cool looking figure. But as far as articulation is concerned, his head can rotate. You can actually get a little bit of pivot out of that forward and back he's got a little bit of tilt as well but uh, not a ton but uh, you get enough I think for a bulky guy like him his shoulders do go out and in this case I don't really mind the fact that they are a little loose because I'm able to maneuver them around a little better that way uh, especially this side uh, the big shoulder pads can kind of make the shoulders a pain in the nuts to move sometimes but in this case uh, they move pretty easy. Uh, they do rotate as well. You get a little bit of butterfly in there, but not a lot. I think they ought to just opt out of that with these big, bulky uh, Warhammer figures. I don't think it's all that necessary, because a lot of them don't uh, hold their weapons with two hands. At least not this guy. He's got a flat hand here, which... Sad face, no double grip hand, so we can have the knife and the gun at the same time, but maybe there's another figure out there that has uh, two grip hands and I can just swap them out. Uh, we'll see. 
That said, he does have a uh, bicep swivel there. He's got a double elbow, I believe. Which I don't think is all that necessary, again, for these bulky types. But you do get uh, a little bit more than 90. Despite the fact he's got all his armor on. So that's impressive. I don't know if I mentioned he's got a bicep cut, but he does. He's got uh, the... Standard McFarlane ball hinge wrists, so you can rotate it and rotate this and give them proper weapon wielding hand there. That said, he does have a diaphragm joint, which is not too loose. Uh, not like the, is it the Reaver? It's the blue one I looked at uh, a couple of months ago, I think. Uh, he had a diaphragm cut too. His was a little bit looser. This guy's isn't quite as bad. It's okay. Uh, he does also have a waist joint, but it's pretty hindered by all this stuff going on. No, you can't turn it though. There you go. But uh, I do believe it's on a ball peg. But uh, you're not going to get a lot out of that. Hips can kick forward and back. A little loose there. Looser than I'd like. This side's a little better. But this side's kind of loose. In and out the hip there not too bad it's got a thigh cut that works on both sides yep on both sides so uh, for a big bulky guy he's got more articulation than you're probably bargaining bargaining for Blech. I can talk here he does have a double knee that does actually crunch up pretty good uh, this plate here I think that makes sense that that uh, sticks out as well because it's kind of a shin guard speaking of shin guards look at that a big honking screaming skull face there that looks pretty rad uh, and then he's got a little bit of play in the ankle here um, I'm not sure if that's a double ball pig or if that's a ball hinge let's say it's a ball hinge but uh, again very hindered due to the nature of the beast here and he's got a toe joint that's not completely worthless it's I think in front enough it's towards the front of the foot enough to where it's not gonna pose a problem even if it is kinda not the tightest thing in the world but it's also not the loosest and if we flip them around, there is a peg hole on the back for the um, backpack here. So if I can get this on a reasonable amount of time. There we go. Snaps right in. Looks good. You do have to play with him a little bit to get him to stand. If you don't want him to fall backwards. Then we got his kniff here. That can go in the loop on his belt like so. It's kind of a pain in the butt to get in there, but it can be done. I do it this way because it sits properly due to the uh, sculpt of the handle there. Um, but again, it is kind of a pain in the butt to get out of there. And then, of course, his hand. You can put his uh, big giant blaster in I guess I'll just lie him down again you can do this and this and he holds his gun pretty well despite how big it is um, he holds his gun quite well really awesome figure man I like this guy a lot uh, I actually got this guy on GameStop along with the Commando Spawn figure I looked at yesterday and the Gunslinger Spawn Deluxe uh, with the horse. Uh, he was on a little bit of a discount. Not a lot. A few bucks off, but I dig him, man. I think he's awesome. Uh, top 10 of the year? I'm not sure. It's a pretty... Uh stiff year as far as competition goes but i think he's definitely on the cards i think he's a really solid figure 
uh, has some looseness, but uh, definitely not as loose as the Reaver I looked at. I think he's a little bit better than that. But uh, only time will tell, I guess. Uh, that said, I unfortunately do not have a lot of my Warhammer figures handy. I only have one more, and it doesn't really make sense to compare him to this guy because he is a lot bigger. So uh, we're just going to skip right ahead with the size comparisons and uh, compare them to our two regulars. So with that being said, let's move right on to that. And as promised, here's our Chaos Marine alongside our two regulars, the Mythic Legions for the Mandibulus, the Mkur Eleven Spawn, who may potentially be the first two members into Squadron Supreme. Uh, we'll see about that. But as you can see, the Chaos Marine is essentially build a figure size. So once again, McFarland Toys is always giving you bang for your buck. So with that being said, kind of wrap things up with some final thoughts. Overall, and much like the Commando Spawn from the Mortal Kombat 11 line I took a look at yesterday, I'm pretty sure that the only thing holding McFarland Toys back nowadays is typical joint looseness because other than that I think this guy has a really solid sculpt and enough paint applications to get by it's just that they need to tighten up some joints in certain areas particularly the midsection the hips and the shoulders where the rotation is concerned the hinge I could probably take or leave the detented and or ratcheted hinge joints in the shoulders just because those can be a little bit too tight at times and you have a tendency to pop the arms off if that's the case. So if they could just tighten some things up, I think we'd be out for the races or out to the races, however the expression goes. Either way, you know what I mean, because other than that, this is a really solid addition to McFarland Toys Collection and Warhammer Collection, because while I may not be up on my Warhammer like I should be, especially considering the fact that I am buying this line. It is a nice piece to have for my overall McFarland Toys collection. So I'm very happy to have this. I think it's awesome. Just needs to be tweaked in a couple of places. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you're so inclined, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know whenever I upload more reviews like this one. If you haven't already, please hit me up on Instagram at Overlord Productions, but as always, keep comment civil, because the world sucks enough as it is, especially when, again, the only thing holding you guys back is the looseness. Let's tighten it up, and we'd be gangbusters. Until next time, catch you guys later.